I'm using Burda magazine pattern number 120 from December 2018, but this tutorial is not pattern specific. You can add your own pockets to any sweatshirt pattern that you like. I have the pattern pieces cut out in French terry, 240 grams per meter. There is the front, the back, two raglan sleeves. The hood is two piece. We'll also need cuffs and a bottom band, in my case made of ribbing, and we'll need a pocket lining. Mine is going to be with two curves, but you can customize the shape of the pockets. I'm cutting out the pocket openings in the front button piece. I measure 12 centimeters from the hem to make sure they're deep enough. The opening must be big enough for a hand to go in, and I'm also checking whether my pocket lining will start one centimeter above the top of the opening. One centimeter is a bit more than I need for my cover stitch top stitching. I'm using a pattern maker to cut out the curved openings. You can make the openings deeper or shallower if you prefer. Just remember they need to be big enough for your hand. We are going to finish them with the ribbing, but I'm not easing them into the ribbing. You can do it if you've cut out openings that are too big. I'm cutting out both openings at once. My front pattern piece is on fold. And now I'm cutting out my pocket pattern piece. I have made this piece myself. It's sort of two pocket pouches joined together in the middle. Of course, you can use any shape you like. I'm cutting it out on fold. The lining piece is about three millimeters wider on each side seam than the front pattern piece to allow for any pulling of the fabric during top stitching. This is not necessary, but remember that the lining must be at least the same width as the front if it's joined in the middle like this one. My pocket lining looks like this, sort of two hills joined in the middle. This shape allows me to have two rows of cover stitching intersecting in the middle. Again, the design of the pockets is up to you. When I place the front pattern piece over my lining, it will give you an idea how the pockets are going to look like. I can also check if the pieces are aligned or whether I need to correct anything. The openings are going to be finished with ribbing and top stitch with the cover stitch. I'm going to prepare my ribbing. My ribbing is tubular, so I cut it open first. I need a 2 inches or 5 centimeters wide strip for my pockets and 15 centimeters or 6 inches wide strip for cuffs and the bottom band. The length of your bands will depend on your pattern. Usually bands are 20% shorter than the corresponding openings. My pocket openings are not eased in, so the trims, the bands, are the same length as the pocket openings. I'm now going to finish the pocket openings with my 2 inches or 5 centimeters wide strips of ribbing. The ribbing is folded in half along the long edge, so the stretch is widthwise, the ribs are horizontal. The ribbing is folded wrong sides together, so the right side of the folded ribbing matches the right side of the fabric. The ribbing is on top of the pocket opening, all the row edges are matching. As you can see, I don't cut my ribbing to size, I simply cut off the excess. I hold the ribbing tight, but I'm not pulling it. We are sewing a curve, so go slowly, making sure the edges are aligned all the time. Now we are going to finish the other pocket opening in precisely the same way. Remember that the folded ribbing must be placed right side to the right side of the fabric. The ribbing is always placed on top, especially if you have a bottom feed machine. But also it's generally good to develop good sewing habits from the start. So the fabric piece that we really don't want to grow as we sew is against the feed dogs or on the bottom. Of course you can do this step on your regular sewing machine using a stretch stitch and pressing the seam allowances to the centre front away from the opening. You might need a ballpoint or jersey needle, size 90, 14 would be perfect. I'm now going to sew the hood before I move on to the cover stitch machine. This hood is just two pieces, so I'm going to sew one seam. I'm not lining the hood, so the hem is going to be folded under and cover stitched. Right sides together, and yet again, we are sewing a curve. So control your fabric using your hand, form a cap with your palm, fingers on the fabric, moving it slightly as you sew. The hood is nearly done. Remember to sew from the wider point of your project to the narrower to prevent the fabric from distorting. So in my case, I'm sewing from the neck base point to the top of the hood, but it might be different for you. 
We can now move to the cover stitch machine. I'm going to cover stitch the ribbing on the pocket openings first. I'm using a top and bottom cover. The seam allowances are directed towards the center front. You can top stitch it on your regular sewing machine using a zigzag or a decorative stitch if your machine has them. The finished pocket opening looks like this. I deliberately use a contrasting color of the cover stitching as it complements the little golden spots on the fabric. And for me, cover stitching is also a decorative feature. I'm going to top stitch the other pocket opening in the same way. I don't use guides for that, I sew to the gauge, which means that in this case, the groove between my needle and the edge of the foot is my guide. Or to put it simply, I only look at this point when I sew. Okay, I'm going to hem the hood now, and for this I do use a hemming guide. There is a separate video if you want to know how to install and use it. My hem is 2.5 cm or 1 inch wide, and I set the slider on the guide to be precisely 2.5 cm from my outer left needle. The hemming guide helps, you just need to make sure the edge of the fabric is always touching the guide. Don't pull your fabric, just guide it gently and control its position. The hood is hemmed and looks like this. The edge of the hem is perfectly covered on the wrong side. There is no need to trim anything. Of course it needs to be pressed properly. I can now move on to cover stitching the pocket lining and this part can be a bit tricky. Depending on your design and the desired shape of the pockets and the top stitching that's going to show this shape. I prefer to baste the pocket linings by hand and use the basting as a guide for my stitching. You can't do it freehand, but it does take some practice, especially if you have a design that needs to be symmetrical. My basting line is about 3mm from the edge of the pocket lining and I try to align the center needle with this line. And it's not always absolutely perfect, but it's good enough. I can now top stitch the other side and as you will see, I'll have two lines of stitches crossing in the middle. Top and bottom cover stitch machines can be a bit temperamental, or rather the spreader can be temperamental. So before you start cover stitching, always check if your spreader or the upper looper on top of the machine is threaded properly. I'm going very slowly because I need to be more precise and I don't want any puckers. The pockets are almost finished and that's the front of my hoodie finished. So the rest of the process is just the construction of the hoodie. Always check if everything is covered properly on the wrong side of the fabric. And we can remove our basting stitches, of course. I'm now going back to the overlocker. And because my pattern is a raglan sleeve hoodie, I'm going to sew both sleeves flat, attaching them to the front and to the back. Then I'm going to sew the side seams, catching my pockets lining as I do so. I'm sewing notch to notch, which means I put my sleeve on top of the front or the back piece and I make sure that as I sew, my only reference is the nearest notch. So I match the fabric between the two notches, nothing else. What I'm trying to explain is that I don't focus on the whole area. When the two pattern pieces match between the notches, all your project will match, nothing will grow and you'll never end up with an spare fabric on one pattern piece. When I don't have any notches, I sew one seam in one go. The raglan sleeve seams are short, so I only use one notch on each sleeve. But this is all very simple, so back of the sleeve to the back and front of the sleeve to the front in both sleeves. The flat construction is super simple. You can skip this section or fast forward it if you prefer. If you are still here, don't forget to like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos. I'm almost done with the sleeves and we can soon move on to do the side seams with the sleeve side seams. This one is the last of my raglan seams. And it's done, <laughs> almost. It's a long seam because it's a pattern for a man. Now we can do the side seams with our pockets. I'm starting at the hem of my hoodie, sewing all the way up to the end of each sleeve. 
the pocket lining is going to be caught in this seam but be careful and don't catch the opening the side finished with the ribbing when sewing this seam i need to make sure the pockets openings the edges of the ribbing stay in the same place on each side and then i just need to match the underarm seams but other than that there is nothing tricky in here okay so now i'm going to add the hood this hood is not overlapping but i'm going to overlap the front by about three millimeters before i start sewing so they will not have any gap between them when the seam is finished i put the hood inside the bodice right sides together my points of reference or notches are the center back and the center front if they match properly and the pattern is well drafted you don't have to worry about anything else I start an inch or a couple of centimeters before my still slightly overlapped fronts and as the feed dogs move the fabric my hood fronts will be perfectly kissing in the middle there will be no gap not even a fraction of a millimeter the rest of the seam is very easy we are just going in the round trying to match the raw edges of the fabric And the hood is now done and I'm going to check if all the seams are perfect, if everything looks okay and it does look okay, everything is matching inside. So I can now construct my cuffs. I'm sewing the short edges of both cuffs and my handband right sides together. You can do it on your regular sewing machine and press the seam open. It's helpful especially if your overlocker or your regular sewing machine struggles with bulky seams. You can also offset the seams by cutting the cuff seam in the seam allowance and pressing it to the opposite side of your hoodie seam allowance. My cuffs and my handband are sewn into loops so I can now fold them in half along the long edge and put them inside the garment. Again, following the rule that whatever piece of fabric is longer and needs to be eased in should be placed against the feed dogs. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule and I don't think sewing is ever dogmatic. All rules can be broken for a reason. But it's good to know that the feed dogs can be very helpful in easing the fabric in. It's simply easier to cooperate with the machine rather than fight against it. When the seam is short, as in the case of the cuffs, I don't actually use any notches. I have done it countless times, so I have quite a lot of practice. But if you are sewing cuffs for the first time, you can divide your cuff and the sleeve end in halves or even in quarters, notch there and match the notches. Always match the seam, of course, and always do it in the seam line. So if your seam allowance is one centimeter, for example, the intersection of the cuff seam and the sleeve seam must match one centimeter from the edge. There is no point in matching the edge of the fabric if the seam line moves. Now it's time for the handband and because the handband is rather long I'm dividing it in halves and matching the half points on the handband with the side seams on my hoodie. It's probably advisable to divide it into quarters and match the quarters till you are comfortable with sewing longer sections without any extra help. My bands are usually more than 20% shorter than the corresponding edge of the project because that's my personal preference. But if you use the standard 20% or 25% shorter bands, you don't actually need a lot of easing in. So it's quite easy to do it without too many notches. The only thing to remember here is that the raw edges are matching. So when we are sewing the front, it will include the pocket lining. Our front will have four layers of fabric. The shell fabric, the pocket lining, and the two layers of ribbing that make our handband. And it's done, and the last thing I'm going to do is cover stitch around the handband. The seam allowances are pressed towards the bodice, away from the ribbing. I'm cover stitching to the gauge, using my presser foot for guidance. In this case, I'm just using three needles bottom cover stitch, so my spreader is unthreaded. This is a very thick seam and it's much easier to use standard bottom only cover stitch. 
But of course, top and bottom cover is also possible. It looks like this. Our hoodie is now finished. We can give it a final press and wear it. This is of course just an example of pockets. You can use your own design and attach the pocket lining to customize your sportswear or leisure wear in a way that suits you. You can make it uniquely perfect for you. And that's the hoodie in all its glory with cover stitched pockets, top and bottom cover stitching lines crossing in the middle with the hand hood where the top and bottom cover stitch also serves as a decorative feature.